Our King and Saviour draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Praise ye the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Alleluia. <coughs> Our King and Saviour draweth nigh. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us sing unto the Lord. Let us heartily rejoice in the strength of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and show ourselves glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hands are all the powers of the earth and the strength of the hills is his also. The sea is his and he made it and his hands prepare the dry land. O oh, worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Let the whole earth stand in awe of him, for he cometh, for he cometh to judge the earth, and with righteousness to judge the world, and the peoples with his truth. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O oh, be joyful in the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness, and come before his presence with a song. Be sure that the Lord is God. It is he who hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Oh, go your way into his gates with thanksgiving, and enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and speak good of his name. For the Lord is gracious, his mercy is everlasting, and the truth of the Lord endures from a generation unto generation. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, O world without end. Amen. King and Saviour draweth nigh, O oh, come, let us adore him. My yoke is easy and my burden is light, says the Lord. O oh, come, let us adore him. This is from the Office of Readings of the Liturgy of the Hours, Volume 3. Ordinary Time Weeks 1 through 17, published by Catholic Book Publishing Corporation, 1975, New York, New York. The Ordinary begins on page 827, and the Propers, with the readings for the Office of Readings, begin on page 447. <clears throat> holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, early in the morning our song shall rise to thee. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, the blessed Trinity. 
Holy, 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 all the saints adore thee. Though the eye of sinful man thy glory may not see, only thou art holy, there is none beside thee, which were and are, and evermore shall be. Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, all thy work shall praise thy name in earth and sky and sea. Holy, 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 merciful and mighty, God in three persons, blessed Trinity. Antiphon 1 Lord our God, in splendor and majesty, you are clothed, wrapped in light as in a robe. This is Office of Readings for the 14th Sunday in Ordinary Time. July 8th, 2024. <clears throat> Antiphon 1. Lord our God, in splendor and majesty you are clothed, wrapped in light as in a robe. Alleluia. Page 828. Psalm 104, a hymn to God, our creator. To be in Christ means being a completely new creature. Everything of the old is gone. Now everything is made anew. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. <coughs> Bless the Lord, O my soul. Lord God, how great you are. Clothed in majesty and glory. Wrapped in light as in a robe. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. Above the range you build your dwelling. You make the clouds your chariot and walk on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flashing fire your servants. You founded the earth on its base to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloak. The waters stood higher than the mountains. At your threat they took to flight. At the voice of your thunder they fled. They rose over the mountains and flowed down to the place which you had appointed. You set limits they might not pass, lest they return to cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. They flow in between the hills. They give drink to all the beasts of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. On their banks dwell the birds of heaven. From the branches they sing their song. Glory be he to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Antiphon 1. Lord our God, in splendor and majesty you are clothed, wrapped in light as in a robe. Alleluia. Page 829. Antiphon 2. The Lord has brought forth bread from the earth and wine to give warmth to men's hearts. Alleluia. <clears throat> from your dwelling you water the hills. Earth drinks its fill of your gift. You make the grass grow for the cattle and the plants to serve man's needs, that he may bring forth bread from the earth and wine to cheer man's heart oil to make him glad, and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord drink their fill, the cedars he planted on Lebanon. There the birds build their nests, on the treetop the stork has her home. The goats find their home on the mountains, and rabbits hide in the rocks. You made the moon to mark the months, the sun knows the time for its setting. When you spread the darkness it is night, and all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The young lions roar for their prey and ask their food from God. At the rising of the sun they steal away and go to rest in their dens. Man goes forth from his work to labor till evening falls. Glory be he to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Antiphon 3. 
Antiphon 2, the Lord has brought forth bread from the earth and wine to give warmth to men's hearts. Alleluia. The Lord, to Antiphon 3, the Lord looked upon all he had made and saw that it was very good. Alleluia. Page 830. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. There is the sea vast and wide. Its moving swarms past counting, living things great and small. The ships are moving there and monsters you made to play with. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it, they gather it up. You open your hands, they have their fill. You hide your face, they are dismayed. You take back your spirits, they die, turning to the dust from which they came. Send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. The mountains send forth smoke at its touch. I will sing to the Lord all my life. Make music to my God while I live. Thoughts be pleasing to him. I find my joy in the Lord. Sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked exist no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be world without end. Amen. Psalm Prayer, page 831. Father, as you made springs and valleys to form streams between mountains, so you made living streams of grace flow from the apostles, that their teaching may bring salvation to all the nations. May we have a practical knowledge of their doctrine, be obedient to their commands, obtain remission of sins through their prayers, and finally receive the reward of eternal happiness. And to fun three, the Lord looked upon all he had made and saw that it was very good. Alleluia. <coughs> Blessed are your eyes, for they see God's works. Alleluia. 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 <coughs> and your ears, for they hear his word. Alleluia, alleluia. Page 447, a reading from the second book of Samuel from the 12th chapter, the first through the 25th verse. The Repentance of David. The Lord sent Nathan to David, and when he came to him, he said, Judge this case for me. In a certain town, there were two men, one rich, the other poor. The rich man had flocks and herds in great numbers. But the poor man had nothing at all except one little ewe lamb that he had brought, bought. He nourished her, and she grew up with him and his children. He shared the little food he had and drank from his cup and slept in his bosom. She was like a daughter to him. Now the rich man received a visitor. But he would not take from his own flocks and herds to prepare a meal for the wayfarer who had come to him. Instead, he took the poor man's ewe lamb and made a meal of it for his visitor. David grew angry with that man and said to Nathan, As the Lord lives, the man who has done this merits death. He shall restore the ewe lamb fourfold because he has done this and has had no pity. Then Nathan said to David, You are the man. Thus says the Lord God of Israel, I anointed you king of Israel. I rescued you from the hand of Saul. I gave you your Lord's house and your Lord's wives for your own. I gave you the house of Israel and of Judah. And if this were not enough, 
I could count up for you still more. Why have you spurned the Lord and done evil in his sight? You have cut down Uriah the Hittite with the sword. You took his wife as your own, and him you killed with the sword. The sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house, because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah to be your wife. Thus says the Lord, I will bring evil upon you out of your own house. I will take your wives while you live to see it, and I will give them to your neighbor. He shall lie with your wives in broad daylight. You have done this deed in secret, but I will bring it about in the presence of all Israel, with the sun looking down. Then David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan answered David, The Lord, on his part, has forgiven your sin. You shall not die. But since you have utterly spurned the Lord by this deed, the child born to you must surely die. Then Nathan returned to his house. The Lord struck the child that the wife of Uriah had borne to David, and it became desperately ill. David besought God for the child. He kept a fast, retiring for the night to lie on the ground clothed in sackcloth. The elders of his house stood beside him, urging him to rise from the ground, but he would not, nor would he take food with them. On the seventh day, the child died. David's servants, however, were afraid to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, when the child was alive, we spoke to him, but he would not listen to what we said. How can we tell him the child is dead? He may do some harm. But David noticed his servants whispering among themselves and realized that the child was dead. He asked his servants, is the child dead? They replied, yes, he is. Rising from the ground, David washed and anointed himself and changed his clothes. Then he went to the house of the Lord and worshipped. He returned to his own house where his servants, and at his request, food was set before him. He ate, and his servants said to him, What is this you are doing? While the child was living, you fasted and wept and kept vigil. Now the child is dead, and you rise and take food. He replied, While the child was living, I fasted and wept, thinking, Perhaps the Lord will grant me the child's life. But now he is dead. Why should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I shall go to him, but he will not return to me. Then David comforted his wife Bathsheba. He went and slept with her, and she conceived and bore him a son, who was named Solomon. The Lord loved him and sent the prophet Nathan to name him Jedidiah on behalf of the Lord. 449. Responsory from the Prayer of Manasseh 9 and 10, and from Psalm 51, 5 and 6. My sins are more numerous than the sands of the sea, and my transgressions are many. Alleluia, Alleluia. I am not worthy to raise my eyes to the height of heaven. Because of my countless offenses, for I have provoked your anger. Alleluia, alleluia. I have done evil in your presence. Alleluia, alleluia. I know my faults, and my sin is ever before me. Alleluia, alleluia. I have sinned against you alone. Alleluia, alleluia. And I have done evil in your presence. Alleluia, alleluia. Page 450. The second reading from a sermon by St. Augustine Bishop from Sermon 19, 
2-3. A sacrifice to God is a contrite spirit. I acknowledged my transgression, says David. If I admit my fault, then you will pardon it. Let us never assume that if we live good lives, we will be without sin. Our lives should be praised only when we continue to beg for pardon. But men are hopeless creatures, and the less they concentrate on their own sins, the more interested they become in the sins of others. They seek to criticize, not to correct. Unable to excuse themselves, they are ready to accuse others. This was not the way that David showed how to pray and make amends to God when he said, I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. He did not concentrate on other sins. He turned his thoughts upon himself. He did not merely stroke the surface, but he plunged inside and went deep down within himself. He did not spare himself and therefore was not Im impudent in asking to be spared. Do you want God to be appeased? Learn what you are to do that God may be pleased with you. Consider the psalm again. If you wanted sacrifice, I would indeed have given it. In burnt offerings, you will take no delight. Are you then to be without sacrifice? Are you to offer nothing? Will you please God without an offering? Consider what you read in the same psalm. If you wanted sacrifice, I would indeed have given it. In burnt offerings, you will take no delight. But continue to listen and say with David, a sacrifice to God is a contrite spirit. God does not despise a contrite and humble heart. Cast aside your former offerings, for now you have found out what you are to offer. In the days of your fathers, you would have made offerings of cattle. These were the sacrifices. If you wanted sacrifice, I would indeed have given it. These then, Lord, you do not want, and yet you do want sacrifice. You will take no delight in burnt offerings, David says. If you will not take delight in burnt offerings, will you remain without sacrifice? Not at all. A sacrifice to God is a contrite spirit. God does not despise a contrite and humble heart. You now have the offering you are to make. No need to examine the herd. No need to outfit ships and travel to the most remote provinces in search of incense. Search within your heart for what is pleasing to God. Your heart must be crushed. Are you afraid that it might perish so? You have the reply, create a clean heart in me, O God. For a clean heart to be created, the unclean one must be crushed. We would be displeased with ourselves when we commit sin. For sin is displeasing to God. Sinful though we are, let us at least be like God in this, that we are displeased at what displeases him. In some measure, then, you will be in harmony with God's will, because you find displeasing in yourself what is abhorrent to your Creator. The response to me at the bottom of page 451. My sin, O Lord, has pierced me through like arrows, but before they wounded me, Alleluia, Alleluia, heal me, O God, with the ointment of repentance, Alleluia, Alleluia. Create a clean heart in me, O God, and put a new and steadfast spirit within me, Alleluia, Alleluia. Heal me, O God, with the ointment of repentance. Alleluia, Alleluia. Father, through the obedience of Jesus, your servant and your son, you raised a fallen world, free us from sin, and bring us the joy that lasts forever. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. My yoke is easy, my burden is light, says the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. David had pushed aside Saul and uh, Saul's uh, descendants as king at the direction of God. And he indulged in that vice uh, so common among the wealthy and powerful in his culture, polygamy adding wives to his collection. It was also, it wasn't just out of lust, it was uh, out of uh, uh, wanting heirs, and uh, they were often political marriage alliances with uh, clans and tribes and families. But uh, one day, he was looking out over from the palace, which was presumably the highest building at the time there in Jerusalem. And he looked out and he saw a woman bathing on her roof, which we would find rather strange, but wasn't. Presumably she had walls around the, uh, the roof. Uh, and uh, so, and she was quite something to look at apparently. And he did not avert his eyes saying, oh, this, uh, this, no, he, had committed adultery in his heart already. And with the way we do now in our culture with pornography so, so prevalent and applauded by our uh, culture so overcome with hedonism and lust and, and all sorts of vices applauded. Uh, And so he commanded her to come to him. He was the king. She was married. What, what recourse did she have, uh, really? Uh, so uh, he uh, commits adultery with her, and she gets pregnant. So she tells him. So he, he, uh, he, he, the her husband is the very loyal servant and soldier of David, Uriah the Hittite. He, he was probably not a Hittite per se. The Hittite Empire had long fallen at the end of the Bronze Age. Uh, probably uh, Neo-Hittite, so uh, or perhaps descended from uh, the people of Hatti in, uh, in Anatolia in Asia Minor. But uh, he was devoted to the Lord, this Uriah. And uh, so uh, David wanted to uh, have him uh, do his mari marital duty with his wife, and then the pregnancy would seem to be his. The child would be his. For we know the child in the womb is is fully human, and uh, and to kill a child in the womb. Uh, is fetal homicide. But anyway, the uh, but Uriah doesn't do this. He's, it's, he's, he's under the, uh, the tradition was that they, they would not uh, do the marital act uh, if they were uh, under duty in war. So anyway, so it's, uh, David decides uh, and he brings others into this, involves others in the murder. Uh, he commands, he said, you know, uh, put Uriah out in the, the thickest of the fighting and then pull back. And so Uriah was killed. As, as Nathan says, by the sword of the Ammonites. So Nathan the prophet, risking his life to proclaim, to fulfill his prophetic vocation in telling the truth to power and telling the truth to uh, to sinners. Uh, we are often 
uh, the preachers uh, have that obligation, but often we're cowed by uh, in fear because uh, we don't want to lose the favor of those in power. Or, or we do not want their displeasure or their revenge uh, to come upon us. So uh, we are often uh, foolish prophets, sometimes even false prophets, uh, you know, condoning what God does not condone, and, uh, or being silent when we need to speak up. Like the watchman, the preacher is like a watchman, of the prophet uh, is like a watchman over the the city, as Ezekiel points out. And if the watchman doesn't say danger is coming and takes off, then he's the lives of those who die are responsible. But if he does and they ignore him, then they're responsible for their own their own deaths, indeed spiritual deaths. Uh, the, that analogy. If they uh, cling to known, willed, grave sin. So anyway, Nathan goes to 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 David, the king, with a case about this uh, pet ewe lamb that was beloved by this poor man and his family, and this rich man has a <coughs> a guest come by. And instead of taking from his vast flocks, he takes the ewe lamb and, and, and steals it and kills it, uh, kills her, and um, uh, and serves that. And so David said, the man deserves death. Well, maybe not death, but he said he has to fulfill that, fulfill that four to fourfold. And then I can just see Nathan lifting his hand and pointing to David and says, you are the man. Now, Nathan was taking his life in his hand. David could have said, how dare you slander me? Uh, uh, this is treason. Take, take him out and execute him immediately. But instead, David recognized his sin. His sin of adultery, his sin of betrayal of a a, a loyal servant, a, a sin of murder through the hands of others, and the sin of involving uh, other people in the murder by commanding them, uh, mis misusing his authority as king. So David repents. And Nathan says, remember, this is not the New Testament, this is the Old Testament. The, the, the sense of corporate responsibilities, so if you're a member of something, a member of a family or whatever like that, you, have, you share responsibility. And uh, often in the vendetta culture that is still sadly often prevalent in the, the Middle East, um, and uh, uh, just about everywhere, let's face it, uh, they, uh, they get revenge. So if you can't get revenge on you for a crime you've done, or get a revenge against a relative of yours or someone in your group. And so uh, Nathan says, uh, you will have, uh, there'll be a terrible things that will happen in your family as a fruit of this adultery, as a fruit of this murder, because the, we, when we're forgiven, we still have responsibility. In fact, our responsibility intensified. And if we have true contrition, we will want that. We will want to do everything we can to heal or be a channel of God's grace in healing uh, the situation that I, we've made very bad, that this, the... the uh, the repercussions of our sins. And so uh, David fasts in intercession for the child, but the child dies. 
And I said, so I said, remember, this is the Old Testament, not the New. And uh, there's in the New, there's, there's forgiveness. But in the New, there's even greater responsibility uh, for, uh, for our sins and repentance. But we don't take it away, the sin. God takes it away, in particular through Jesus Christ, through his incarnation, death and resurrection, and the outpouring of the Holy Spirit takes away our sins. So David knew the power of repentance. Mm -hmm. And uh, in his grief at the death of the child, he didn't just descend into himself, but he reached out and comforted his wife Bathsheba in this. St. Augustine, in his commentary on on uh, this psalm in sermon, sermon 19, says, Let us never, if I admit my fault, you, O oh God, will pardon it. So if I confess my sin, if I go to, to that, experience that wonderful sacrament of reconciliation and uh, know the power of repentance, the power of contrition especially, God forgives, you know, when we go to confession, uh, even if we have attrition, that is, we're uh, sorry for our sins because uh, they hurt us, or they um, uh, hurt, uh, hurt me in, as an individual, and I don't want to go to hell. So, not wanting to go to hell is a good place to start, but it's not the best place to end. Uh, it, it, uh, in our relationship with God. No, the, to love God with your whole heart, soul, mind, and strength of your neighbor as yourself, as Jesus tells us, quoting from the Torah, mind you, uh, from the old the covenant, because the, uh, as St. Augustine said, in the Old Testament is the New Testament hidden, and the old, New Testament is the New, the Old Testament revealed. So he says, our lives, let us never assume that if we live good lives, we will be without sin. So we should always grow and have a deeper repentance, uh, grow and have a greater self-examination, but not in a morbid way, not in a self-hating way, but in uh, experiencing and promoting true love for ourselves in the power of repentance, in the joy of repentance, in the joy of forgiveness, in the joy of knowing that God is most merciful, all, all loving. Indeed, God, the Holy Trinity, is eternal love. That's one of the reasons we believe God has to be more than one person and, and one, absolute be, one absolute being. Where he says, our lives should be praised only when we continue to beg for pardon. So we throw ourselves constantly, drawn by grace, into the ocean of grace, into the ocean, the bottomless ocean of divine mercy. <coughs> and he said, uh, the less they, this is the human beings in, in our uh, sin condition, the less, the less they concentrate on their own sins, the more interested they become in the sins of others. Now, we acknowledge the sins of others. We know of the objective wrong, acknowledge that, and, and we are called, like Nathan, to a prophetic call to repentance, with words of warning and of hope. <clears throat> but we're not to pass judgment on people. That's God's. We're not to pass judgment on ourselves, St. Paul says, ourselves. Uh, we be, that's up to God. Uh, and we throw ourselves upon divine mercy in uh, the power of earnest repentance. But uh, people love to gossip about other people's sins. Now, of course, the you know, public figures often need to be called publicly to repentance, as uh, 
Nathan did to David. It, it was in the uh, it, it probably David was sitting on his throne or something like that. In, in a case, he, it, it was probably public that he uh, uh, revealed the sin because he was a, 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 a person. But uh, but often that's it's even public figures often their private sins are uh, not for us to reveal unless of course it's a, a big repercussion on on uh, the person's uh, ability to fulfill his or her office or his or her influence so this unable to excuse themselves they are they seek to criticize not to correct so it's it's not out of out of a positive uh, me, uh, motive that they're doing this but out of uh, uh, prurient interests, out of uh, uh, egotistic, uh, inflating their own egos, out of uh, self-righteousness, out of even hatred uh, or, or, or uh, uh, envy or uh, uh, using this in uh, unjust competition. So... So, but David's contrition is pointed out. He did not merely stroke the surface, but he plunged inside, that is inside himself, and went deep down within himself. He did not spare himself, and therefore was not imprudent in asking to be spared. So he acknowledges this, and he accepts the reality of the consequences of this. Uh, and so the, the, the uh, you know from from the the sin of polygamy, uh, yes, it was condoned uh, in in the Old Testament, uh, uh, but uh, and you know they they had a a, a, a degree of, of quote unquote innocence in this, uh, but we know better. We know better. We know better about adultery. We know that polygamy is theory, is is a form of adultery. So in, it should uh, do all to discourage it, uh, and uh, by law and other things. So. Sinful though we are, St. Augustine says, let us at least be like God in this, that we are displeased at what displeases him. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail the long-awaited Son, Lord of all the realm to come. Deaf and blind and lame are healed, and God's kingdom is revealed. Where, O oh Master, do you stay? Come and see, we hear him say. Let us go to where he stays, hear his words and learn his ways, leaving all We'd known before by the Jordan River's shore, ancient roads and deeper sea, let us follow heedfully. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>